In this tutorial, we are going to solve a Physics 1015 2022 exam past paper. So, I have got question 2, that is section B. Now, question 2, because question 1 is MCQ. So, part A is saying boxers in the 19th century used their bare fist. In modern boxing, fighters wear padded gloves. How do gloves protect the brain of the boxer from injury? So, I want us to understand one thing here to say that the gloves protect the brain by increasing the duration of the impact. What do I mean? If I give you, we know that um, we're not talking about this question is coming from momentum actually because we are rating the force and the time. So we do know that uh, impulse is given by equal to the change in momentum and impulse is equal to the force times the change in time then the change in momentum it is the mass times the change in velocity. So now we want to make the force as a subject of formula. What is, what is going to happen? So I'll replace this with the change in momentum just like that then divide both sides by change in t even here by change in t we can see that, see that force will be equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time now I'm going to explain this question using this relationship okay so one thing we need to understand is that the question is boxers in the 19th century used their bare fist by then they were not using the the gloves okay but now in this in this era we are using gloves so they are saying that how do gloves protect the brain of the boxer from injury so now it will take time one thing i want you to understand from this formula here is that so gloves is they are going definitely to protect the brain injury by increasing the duration of the impact so they will increase the time so if we increase the time if the time increases here okay from our formula if we increase the time the force is going to reduce if the force is being reduced meaning the impact will be less so the, the relationship that you have to talk about here is the force and time so what is going to happen is that these graphs protect the the brain injury by increasing the duration okay of the impact thereby reducing the force experienced so the duration is going to be increased for the time it takes for you just to hit that person it's going to increase so when the time increases the force is going to reduce so that is the explanation which is there so the force is going to be the force uh, the force experience is going to be reduced because the duration has been increased yeah so how do you write it you write it like this you say um, graphs protect the brain injury by increasing by increasing the duration of the impact of the impact thereby reducing the the force experienced That is it. So graphs protect the brain injury by increasing the duration of the impact, thereby reducing the force experienced from this formula. Okay. So that is it for part A. Now let us go ahead and also do part B. Part B is saying a, 70, a 75 kg ice cutter 
moving at 10 meters per second, crashes into a stationary scatter of equal masses. After the collision, the two scatter moves as a unit at 5 meters per second. Suppose the average force a scatter can experience without breaking the bone is 4,500 newtons. If the impact time is 0 0.100 seconds, does the bone break? So it's just a matter of us finding the force. If that force is going to be greater than, if the force is going to be greater than 4,500, then the bone is going to break. Okay. If the force is going to be less than 4,500, then the bone did not break. Okay. So there we go. Now, we do know that this is momentum. The masses are the same. So we're going to call, if I gather my data from here, we're going to have, I'll say M1 being equal to 75 kgs, and also V1 initial, also is C, 10 meters per second. So M2 is also 75. Then V2 initial is zero, it was at rest. Okay, and the final, we have been told that the final is what? 5 meters per second. And this, we should know that the formula for, this is inelastic collision, it is M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial being equal to, we add the mass because they are, they are going to be moving together, times that. So now we are not going to use this formula because we have been told that the velocity, the final velocity is 5 meters per second. Now, I want us to, to find the force and we know that the force can only be found using momentum, using, uh, using impulse. So impulse is equal to the change in momentum. We know this formula. And impulse, I gave you from part A, it is force times the change in time. And the change in momentum, it is mass times the change in velocity. So the change in velocity, it is V final minus V initial. Okay. So I will replace this, the change in momentum. I'm going to replace it with force times the change in time. Okay. The change in momentum, it is mass then the change in velocity is V final minus V initial. We divide it by the change in time. We divide it by the change in time. F will be equal to the mass V final minus V initial. I divide that by the change in time. So now from here, let's see what is our final velocity. So the force will be equal to the mass is 75, the final velocity is 5, the initial is 10. The time is 0 0.100 seconds. So what is the force? So the force is going to be negative, but we are going to get the magnitude. Okay. So 5 minus 10 is negative 5, so negative 5 times 75, I'm getting negative 375 divided by 0 0.1, I'm getting negative 3750 newtons. Now this answer, you have to get the magnitude only, so you ignore the positive. So the magnitude of the force is 3750 newtons. Now, if that is the force, what next should we uh, know? The next thing that we have to know is now we compare this force and the force that we have been given. The question was, suppose the average force a scatter can experience without breaking a, a bone is 4,500. If the impact of the time is 0 0.1, does a bone break? So this force, is less than is less than 4500 newton therefore the bone did not break
as simple as that. Okay, the bone did not break. So that is it for part A and B.